Subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos. What's up guys, my name is Mr. J-Man, back for another historical YouTube video. So, people on my Belgian Philippines video have commented about Germany almost colonizing the Philippines. So because of that, I'm gonna make that video right now. So without further ado, this is Germany's colonization attempt on the Philippines. Before we start this video, I'd like you guys to give a subscribe to this channel because look at the charts right now, 98.8% of you haven't subscribed yet and you know make this channel grow so please be sure to subscribe to this channel turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos of me and yeah let's go back to the video quick note uh my again my german friend helped me uh to pronounce these uh german words so if you are a german uh audience who are watching this right now uh i might get it right uh, not get it right so you know uh take caution if you're a German. And hi to my German friend. So yeah, let's go on to the video. So I briefly mentioned about the creation of the German Empire in the German Mindanao video. So I'll talk about on how that came to be. In the early 19th century, following the Napoleonic Wars, the Congress of Vienna established the German Confederation, which is a state alliance of 35 German states, including both the Kingdom of Prussia and Austria, with the Austrian Emperor as its leader. However, the state is seen within the Confederation as weak and incompetent. Due to the rising tensions between Austria and Prussia, calls for a unification of all Germans soon arose. With the rise of liberalism, and nationalism in Europe and the crackdown by officials led to the outbreak of the 1848 revolution across the German states. This convinced the liberals to meet in Frankfurt discussing plans to unify the state and the appointment of Prussian King Friedrich Wilhelm IV as emperor. The king declined the offer and by the 1850s, the revolution slowly faded away. This all changed in 1861 when King Wilhelm I took the throne and appointed Otto von Bismarck as minister president, where he led Prussia to war with Denmark, Austria, and France, leading to the birth of the German Empire in 1871, becoming a European power, increasing their naval superiority, and the establishment of her colonies in Africa and Asia Pacific. It's the latter that the mighty Iron Cross set its sights on eyeing the Philippines as its next colonial collection. In 1898, during the height of the Spanish-American War, Spain lost to the American Navy in the Battle of Manila Bay, which took many Western powers by storm. This convinced the Deutsches interest on the ill-fated Spanish Spanish colony, as they saw the island as a potential for commercial markets that can benefit the country's economy. But American expansion on the colony caused concerns of its ambitions. So to monitor the situation, on May 11, Prince Henry of Prussia tasked a spy from Hong Kong to travel down to Manila, where a German merchant informed him that a successful rebellion in the island is imminent and the leader supposedly preferred to be colonized by another European power. Prior to the war, there were rumors of Philippine revolutionaries secretly collaborating and showed sympathies to the Germans, which led to the arrest of Spanish authorities and executed a number of them. This was confirmed by the German council based in Manila, and two days later contacted German foreign minister Bernard von Bülow to explain that the people desired to gain independence rather than getting colonized by a western power, and some Filipinos wanted to turn the island into a European-style monarchy, in which the consul floated the idea to offer the crown to Prince Henry. Hearing all of this, Bülow consulted Kaiser Wilhelm II to transfer the Philippines as a German colony. Intrigued, he agreed. The government, or Reichstag, then pressed forward Vice Admiral Otto von Dietrichs along with his fleet to sail down from their post in Nagasaki, Japan to Manila Bay so they could gather information about the war. Protection of their own citizens and businesses in the island as well as inspection of the locals if truly their sentiment is pro-German. While at the same time, German ambassador to the US, Theodor von Hulen, was tasked to investigate the opinions of the the American public about the country's debates whether they would approve to annex the Philippines as a US territory. Surprisingly, Bülow had more interest to acquire more territories for the empire, so on June 8, he called the German ambassador to the UK, Karl von Hatzfeld, to list down territories from Africa and Asia Pacific that the German government wished to seize, and this includes the Carolines, Samoa, the Sulu Archipelago, and the island of Mindanao. On June 12, the same time Aguinaldo officially declared their independence from Spain, many foreign warships from Britain 
Britain, France, Japan, and Germany's SMS Kumeran and SMS Irene appeared off Manila's shores, while a month later, Dietrich's squadron entered Manila Bay. Two days later, SMS Princess Wilhelm joined the group, with a combine of five cruisers, including Dietrich's flagship SMS Kaiserin Augusta, became the second powerful fleet at the bay, with Britain having two, while France and Japan with one battleship, but lagged behind with the US having six ships. However, it put George Dewey's Asiatic Squadron on notice and raised suspicions over Germany's presence in the island. Saw the Germans began supplying the enemy with food, allowing Spanish soldiers to medically be treated at their ships while Dietrich continuously calling out Dewey's fleet for blocking the bay, despite no announcement by the Commodore. Hints aggravating the already strained relationship between the two countries and increasing anti-German sentiment in the US. The two nations almost butted head on July 1st when SMS Irena came to Subic Bay, rescued the civilians as well as defending Spanish troops positioned at Isla Grande. This was during the Filipino rebels taking some balas from the Spanish, and once they saw the German ship on the island, they contacted Dewey and immediately sent the USS Reginald and the USS Concord to transport the rebels and help them to seize the island as well as to confront the ship. However, Irene left before the ship's arrival and eventually left the colony two days later. This angered Dewey and told the Germans, quote, as we are in for it now, it matters little to us whether we fight Spain or Germany or the world, and if you desired war, you can have it right here. You need not cable Berlin, nor need me to Washington. You can just have war here and now." End quote. With the threat of conflict from Dewey and the surrender of Manila to both the American and Filipino forces, led the German fleet to back down and left the island on August 15. Once the Americans annexed the Philippines as part of the Treaty of Paris on December 10, the Reichstag abandoned their pursuit of the Philippines, but would be able to gain the Caroline, Samoa, and the Mariana Islands from Spain in 1899. They became part of German New Guinea. While the souring relations between the US and Germany would lead America to enter World War I in 1917 against the German Empire. Thank you guys for watching this video and I hope I didn't butcher uh, all the German pronunciations. Uh, again, uh, my friend, you know, German friend helped me, you know, to how to pronounce these. I hope I got it right for those German audience right now for watching. But yeah, uh, if you like it, be sure to like, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, and be sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Instagram, which there will be a link in the description. And don't forget to watch these videos that are popping right now on the screen. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Stay safe and see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Bye.